Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Anime Theory, where Death Note Month is going to be way longer than a month because I overcommitted and chose to do too many videos. Oh well, I guess Death Note Month is more like Death Note Quarter now with some other videos in between. So today I'm doing something a bit different. I'm showcasing a theory from the Death Note community, specifically the one located on Death Note Amino. It's actually a pretty cool app and I actually use it from time to time. This isn't sponsored or anything, just thought I'd bring mention to a cool community. This theory originates from a user by the name of Blank, and though I've had some similar ideas, I'd figured I'd credit them and promote a cool community to boot. Everyone who's watched or read Death Note is likely aware of L's caretaker Watari. He's pretty much known as the happy grandpa of the series. He's experienced, caring, and seems to have a deep love for L, as we see throughout the series. Now, what kind of sick monster would make a negative theory about this adorable guy? Uh, me, me, I guess? You see, this man is hiding a dark secret, a past wrought with misery and suffering, all because of Watery. He may look innocent on the outside, but trust me, this man has done some dark deeds. Why don't we take a closer look? The series brings a bit of mention to an orphanage by the name of Whammy House, one owned and founded by Watari himself. The series itself is quite quiet about what exactly this place is, with it really only saying it's where El, Nier, and Mello were brought up. It's supposedly an orphanage meant to bring about the best and brightest individuals, and I mean it seems successful considering how these three turned out, or at least that's the way it looks from a glance. Thankfully, with some side material, we get a better look at this establishment. It all takes place in the pages of the novel Death Note Another Note, the Los Angeles BB murder cases. Huh, reminds me I gotta get to that BB theory. Oh, well, it'll be out sooner or later. In the book, we find out that it wasn't just L, Nier, and Mello that were held there, but there have been quite a number of different individuals that have been trained by this establishment. One such individual was B, otherwise known as Beyond Birthday. This man would later become a psychopath, mutilating bodies in a horrible way. The whole reason behind this has to do with what he went through at Whammy House. The place basically wants everyone there to be molded into L, the perfect detective. It was this constant pushing, the constant requirement that he best L, that created the killer he soon became. But I get what you're thinking, maybe it was just a fluke. The others probably turned out fine. Well, to that I say no, they didn't. I mean, really take a look at Nier, Mello, and L. Mello is so determined to beat Nier and become the next L that he's willing to kidnap to claim victory. Nier is an antisocial weirdo that can barely communicate with those around him and likely can't function on his own. Even L, as wonderful as he is, exhibits several behavioral issues. He's incapable of functioning around people, being considered eccentric, rude, and downright bizarre. He also has no care about breaking the rules or even making people suffer, even once straight up torturing Misa for months. None of these three turned out well. Sure, they might be really smart, but on a social level and moral level, they're all disasters. Their mental health, their social skills, and their ability to function as normal people, none of that mattered. All that mattered was that they become geniuses. But nowhere is this more obvious than with another member of the orphanage, one you likely barely heard about. A was another such student that was aiming to be L, the greatest detective. Over time, however, the training proved too much for the kid, and so, in order to escape his horrible existence, A decided it was best to leave. Not leave the orphanage, no. Instead, he left life itself. He killed himself, all because the pressure was too much for him. And considering the evidence left in the side materials and live-action movies, it's unlikely that he was the only one. So it was Watari's own lack of care that led to B becoming a psychopath, destroyed L, Mello, and Nier's chances of having anything resembling a normal life, and caused the death of A. This man clearly cared about nothing more than creating a set of geniuses. But one could argue that he takes really good care of L himself. Perhaps this is his way of atoning for his sins, trying to make up for past mistakes. I mean, he did cause the death of a poor kid, so maybe it all got to him. Well, I'm sorry to say this, but his love for L isn't what it seems. In fact, the reality is that his love for L is much sadder than you'd imagine, and that he hasn't improved one bit since the death of A. Notice that Watsuri only gives L things he wants, like food, sweets, and mainly sustenance in general. Watsuri never tries to teach L how to act like a normal person. 
He never teaches him proper manners and never allows him to properly function on his own. This is because he doesn't want L to function on his own at all. He wants him to remain reliant because to be frank, L isn't his kid, L's his invention. He's his life work, the most successful invention he's ever created. All the work he's doing, it's all simple maintenance. He's merely trying to keep his prized possession alive. If L's allowed to function on his own, his invention, and thus all the work he's done may just disappear one day. This isn't love, it's just depressing. Watari is a demented individual, one of the most demented in all of Death Note. People complain about Light for having no heart, but in reality, Watari is no different. He created an orphanage, one that would take gifted young children and turn them into geniuses. They weren't kids anymore, they were his inventions. And just like inventions, it doesn't matter if you mess up a couple times. Sure, Beyond Birthday was driven to madness by the demands placed on him. Sure, Mellow, Near, and L have all been messed up beyond repair. And sure, A might have passed away after not being able to take it all, but who cares? As long as Watchery gets his invention, that's all that matters to him. This man is no loving grandpa. He's an inventor taking care of his invention, being sure that it stays safe and reliant. And considering L himself actually loves the man, it makes it all the sadder when you realize the truth, that Watchery is merely a monster. Hey everybody, what's going on? If you like this video, why not subscribe and click that bell, I guess. And hey, watch some other videos. I got more coming, so stay tuned for that. Not really much else to say besides, see you later.